approach to that, you think. We try to find a way by looking at obstacles in the form of problems. And as you heard from Michael, 9% are not very good. There's a paper titled Solar Cooking, Why Isn't It Global Yet? Maybe you read that paper. We looked into it. We asked the same question today. Why we have to speed up the diffusion of solar cooking? So, what are the obstacles? Well, here's the outline of our wounds. Maybe too much. Okay, I'll back up. Uh, this is the outline for our presentation. I will look into the background and tell you what we found and very briefly about the theory behind our proposal. And Sarah will present the methodology and its application. And hopefully we'll have some questions at the end. Uh -huh. so. Yes, you know this. We don't have to tell you more. Uh, so the cooking started decades ago. And still, there are very few examples of successful long-term adoption. So what are the obstacles or, or why is it difficult to find good examples, to see them? We searched in papers and reports some of them from SEI's own web page, uh, for example, the most significant solar cooking projects. And you can read our paper if you want to know. I need to keep it here. So, uh, if you want to see what papers we looked into. And what we found can be divided in different ways. And we chose these four ways. And I will go through them rather quickly. First of all, do they exist, the successful projects? It's extremely important to document the projects carefully before the journalists do so. Right now there are journalists' investigation going on in Sweden and Denmark regarding suspicious carbon offset projects. Some of them certified by the gold standard, and the results are not very positive. So either they exist or we can't find them. We need to document. I always miss this one. <laughs> the financial sustainability is a problem. A cooker given away for free and used only a couple of months for some reason, which is not a successful, sustainable example. And there are proven examples of financial benefit from solar cooking, so why are we so scared to charge? An inadequate training could be one reason for problems, and specifically you know, the, the, the lack of the sustainable supply chain. You need to find replacements and spare parts if you have a cooker. Will break. Sometimes uh, something that we call ineffective communication strategies. If you promise that the solar cooking this, that solar cooking will solve all your problems with cooking in the future, then the user will be, be disappointed the first cloudy day or rainy day such as today. We will come back to that uh, poverty stigma, poverty stigma later. So, local needs and culture may have not been predicted, <laughs> might have been neglected. Sorry. Uh, the quality of the cooker. Uh, no, sorry. Um, yeah. Culture. The quality of the cooker, as you can see, yeah, the quality to the right. 
doesn't always meet expectations. And the lifespan is too short, or the cooker is slower than one month. Social leverage can be used much more to make solar cooking become cool, as Sara said. Think about the hot pot can be cool. Uh, we try to find local leaders already, such as leaders of women's group, etc. But we can probably do much more. Search for important persons to become opinion leaders, guiding people into solar cooking. And always remember that we tend to adopt a behavior rather than what is being told. If you want to follow, it's more important what you do than what you say. So the poverty stigma. Do we consider soda cooking only as a side note? I think I got wrong. Again, sorry. Do you want to get back? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you need help? Huh? Stop. Strange, yeah, yeah, there we are, sorry. The equipment presented to the most in need, as you say, may look like equipment for poor people. <coughs> I don't want to be considered as poor, is a statement. If you have not seen that statement in an evaluation report, it might be because you cannot introduce solar cooking to a person with that reaction. And so no report will be written. And still it seems that we also tend to address the most in need. Who are they? Are they the rich ones? So do we consider solar cooking only as a side note for people going from poverty to middle class standard or further? Once they have saved enough money thanks to solar cooking, they can afford to buy an electric stove. Is this, is this the scenario we want? We think these hurdles can be at least partly overcome by a new approach. We search for help in diffusion theory where the opinion leaders are important. They can affect the speed of adoption, making us reach the point, tipping point faster. As can be seen in this S-curve. The S-curve describes the adoption of an invention over time. It's a uh, script described by Rogers. An invention of an adoption, an invention, solar cooking. Yes, we can consider solar cooking still as an invention since it's still quite unknown to many people in many places. Ask around and you will see. So opinion leaders can speed up that point, called the tipping point or takeoff point. The faster we reach this one, the faster we can. The, the less energy or resources we need to, to uh, put in, and the faster we can reach the 100%. Mm -hmm. Yes, sorry. Mm -hmm. I think there's definitely a challenge here that we can um, think a little bit further about. Um, in a society, um, there are many different types of people, um, and those that we uh, approach for the introduction of solar cooking um, as a solution, they look up to some of these other people in their society, and they consider what are they doing, um, what are the people we're doing that we respect doing, what are the people that we don't respect doing. And that has uh, implications for us. Um, so 
basically, if we want to make it more than just a side note, it, we have to treat it like more than just a side note. We have to um, partly use things ourselves. We have to be that good example that we want to show uh, the person, you know, that we're talking to, that we want to adopt this technology. We have to be their good example. Um, and in doing so, you know, we can go about trying to make it look cool uh, and lots of other things, but the most important is no matter how simple it is, show that you use this too. Okay? That way, um, we can move beyond the poverty stigma into uh, an area where this is a technology that's interesting regardless of your living So we started thinking along this line a while back and started looking for ways that we could represent this. What models can we use? And we quite liked uh, the work of um, a Swedish professor Oh, thank you. <laughs> a bit of a mind blank there. Uh, Swedish professor Hans Rusling is famous for uh, working a lot with statistics um, and data visualization. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen TED Talks uh, and are familiar with the website Gapminder. Uh, here, uh, the living standards in a society are divided into four levels, uh, in this case represented by uh, a group that's earning less than two dollars a day, a group that's earning between two and eight dollars a day, uh, a group that's earning between eight and thirty-two dollars a day, and a group that's earning above thirty-two dollars a day. Um, the majority of the population fit within the, cat the group that's earning between two and eight dollars a day. Um, but there are also uh, a number um, in that category just above that. Uh, there are certain implications that we're going to be talking about in just a moment. Uh, the nice thing about this model is that it can be applied to pretty much any country. It can be applied to Sweden, it can be applied to Portugal, it can be applied to Kenya, it can be applied to Chile um, or Honduras, wherever we want to go, this is something, uh, although maybe a bit of an oversimplification, it's a good tool that we can use. All right? We have 7 billion people in the world, four living standards in all, present on all continents and in all countries. So we thought, let's start with this. Let's try this. What if we could, you know, disseminate and... Well, this our approach does have a lot of advantages. We can re reduce the poverty stigma. We can increase the reach. Instead of simply introducing the technology to one social group that has one social that has one income, uh, we could spread it to the entire uh, community to, to multiple classes, which increases the chance of it being adopted uh, in society more permanently. Uh, this results in a more balanced price distribution, better access to equipment, spare parts, better infrastructure, more accelerated uh, R&D, so the development of the technology happens faster, and overall reduce CO2 emission in the society. Okay, so we're working with this in a, as part of a process uh, that involves um, a quality, quality controlled uh, project development model uh, where we start with making an analysis of uh, the community or the country that we will uh, be approaching with the solar cooking uh, project. Um, we'll take a look at that analysis in a little bit. Uh, and based on this analysis, we can design the project, and if a solar cooker is involved, 
design that solar cooker to suit that market or that audience or community, depending on what word you prefer to use. Uh, for the third step, we can uh, apply the plan, uh, document it, and identify ways of monitoring. This will allow us to monitor the progress and the impact over time um, so that we can follow up even after we end uh, or exit the project. And the goal with every exit is to have a handover so that we don't just go somewhere um, and you know then suddenly leave. There has to be a local continuity after our initial project. Um, as those two smart girls uh, <laughs> in the podcast mentioned, you have to work with people. Um, and that means that after, after the project is over, uh, there should be some form of infrastructure in place or a local startup or more startups uh, that can continue the project and that we can come back to to follow up on um, on these um, performance indicators or factors that we monitor. Okay. Uh, one of the one of the key things to look at uh, in this model is the fact that people's lives aren't static. Um, people move between the different social levels. Um, people who start at some point being poor can improve the situation, move on to becoming middle class. People who are rich might have a really bad turn of events and fall back down to the poverty level. Um, and the way that people move through these levels um, can be quite different uh, in different societies. Uh, but in many, having a job or a small business that is generating some money can be a huge step to moving uh, to the next uh, income level and staying there. In our society, getting a tertiary level education, a university degree, uh, keeps people in the middle class and can pull poor people out of poverty and into the middle class. That's why we value uh, tertiary level or high level education. Um, if in our society, in, in most Western or European countries, uh, you need really to invest to reach a higher uh, living standard to become rich essentially. Uh, that means you might you know, you might buy a house and then you sell it and you make some money off that. And, you know, you continue to use that money to make more money. Uh, and in all of these, the way people move um, becomes a, a, a way for us to, to find leverage for distribution. We can, for example, target students that are in tertiary education. Um, and teach them more or involve them more in solar cooking um, because that way the technology is more likely to spread within that social category, or in that social uh, income level. Of course, we also need to characterize the levels um, because that will be very different um, in, in different places. Uh, in this case, we choose to look specifically at influence pathways. So how people are influenced, uh, where they go to make their decisions or to find the information they need to make, to base those decisions on. Uh, we look at what resources are available and what their needs and desires are. These are uh, slightly more abstract things but they're really important in understanding how we can effectively uh, distribute uh, these uh, solar cookers. Because what motivates people can be quite different. Um, 
in some places, for example, uh, women are more interested in how uh, a solar cooker can help her, uh, you know, have more time, have more spare time, and how it can make the family happier. Whereas uh, the men are more interested in, you know, how, how much money can I save with this? Uh, of course, generalization, <laughs> it's different for, for different people. But in our model community, uh, the people who are in the lower uh, income level, those who are at the lowest level of poverty, their influence pathways are their, their network, uh, their contacts, their friends, their family. That is their primary source of influence. That is how they learn about new things. Uh, once they move a step up, uh, they can start using accessible social media, for example, on their phone. They can be using things like um, uh, like WeChat or Facebook, depending on where they live. Uh, and that way, um, be influenced. Uh, people in the third level um, can go on to different uh, sites, you know, like uh, Yelp or uh, TripAdvisor, uh, for example, if you want to you know, look at um, places to eat, places to go. Uh, there are also, you know, so social sites for evaluating products, and this uh, group is using that. Um, people in the highest social level are using their connections uh, at special clubs to um, get their source of information. Um, that means we can, we can actually work with this uh, at every social level. Um, we can adapt ourselves to the resources available um, for people uh, at the lowest level of poverty. They might not have um, the monetary resources to buy the most um, costly to build solar cooker, um, but they still have resources, even if that's just something as simple as a skill set. Uh, when people reach the next level, um, there are many more opportunities that are possible, and that keeps increasing. When people are at the lowest poverty level, their needs can be simple. Uh, they might just want a bike so they can travel further, faster. Uh, at the second level, they might want a motorcycle or a moped instead of that bike. Uh, at the third level, a car would be more relevant, uh, more of a desire. Um, and at the highest level, it might be more interesting to get something you know, a bit cool, a bit pricey, like a sports car or uh, a Tesla or, uh, in this case, um, a water scooter. How this looks will be different. And there are lots of things that one can analyze. Um, ultimately, you really have to find uh, or identify a number of, of factors that you think will be relevant for your project. Uh, we recommend as many as possible, but all of these are very easy to, uh, to miss. Okay. We tried to apply this in an example uh, by looking at heat retention cooking. Okay, so here uh, at the lowest level, we have a, uh, a very simple hay basket. Um, with this one, uh, you can save money, you can have more free time, uh, and you have better health. It's homemade from things you have around the house, old clothes, um, you know, broken pieces of cloth, uh, and there is not a direct mobility pathway, so we haven't put one in. At the second level, it's a cheap uh, thermal cooker. Um, they now have saved some money and they can afford to buy something inexpensive, maybe even secondhand, but it's possible now. Um, at the next level, we have a more advanced, more expensive version of a thermal cooker. Um, for this, they need to get to that higher uh, level. 
which might be through a university education. Um, you know, we haven't really found any super fancy version that might be attractive for, uh, for the highest economic level. Um, but uh, I'm sure there, there might be something like that. Um, I'd like you to, I'd like, sorry. Um, before we finish, uh, we'd like to invite you to consider this model, consider this idea, and how you would uh, design a solar cooker to work for these levels. Um, I've been looking at one design myself that's modular, so you get basically more features and different features depending on the, the financial level. There's a lot of stuff we can do with this and we can talk later about it. Um, but uh, we thought we'd try to get some questions in just right at the end here. So does anyone have any questions about this problem, about this model? Yes, one right at the back there. Hello. Um, mm -hmm. This model you are applying, uh, you are searching to get a design for every situation, can be applied to every level, because you have, if you, if you change continent, I don't think the same solar cooker can be applied yeah. because of the local characteristics. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, you need to apply an analysis for that particular community that you're working with at a given time. Yes. I believe also that uh, the part where you put local startups and infrastructure in this model, they should enter directly in the analysis and in the whole model. Because yes. we tend to, to analyze it from outside to the problems and the needs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I believe the design project implementation and the analysis must be also made by the people who cook, by the people who built it. Of course. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. That, I think that, uh, <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's really what we wanted to show uh, with this kind of cyclical uh, schema, where, where the information uh, from show it very well because I don't really have a pointer, but uh, the information from the project goes into the next project so that the, there is communi communi a two-way communication that it's not just that we go in and try to do something, it has to be, uh, you know, working together, it has to be a two-way communication. Um, but we'd also like to invite you, now that we're right at the end of our time, um, that's okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get to your question. Uh, but we'd also like to invite everyone here to come with feedback and to try to experiment with what we presented today. Can I also invite you to the session 8C on Friday discussing can we increase the solar cooking diffusion speed by entering new markets? So I, I thank you for an interesting uh, paper. I have in my heart a little doubt about uh, the philosophy which is adapted to the, norm, to the normal marketing philosophy. The more wealthy you are, the better product, product you have. I believe that the sun inherently offers a chance to give to the poor people the best results because it's all free and the ingenuity to design solar cookers should not be in this curve. You should just reverse, bring the best cookers to the poor, and then you will not have this poverty, poverty stigma you spoke about. Okay. Okay. But Thank you for what sharing. we wanted to say is that uh, once you go into solar cooking, there is a future for it, wherever you start. But you're right. Maybe. All right, thank you.